Hi, my name is Bakhadar Ahmedov. Welcome to the course of Probability and Statistics. We're going to start the sequence of lectures on parameter estimation. And to, in today's lecture, particularly, we're going to talk about the point and interval estimation. In the beginning of the lecture, I would like to ask you a couple of questions. And they are going to be our objectives to this lecture. So throughout this lecture, we are going to build techniques in order to try to answer to the following questions. For example, I would be interested to know what is the average blood pressure of women over 45 years old in a whole country. And this might be interested, inter, interesting from the medicine perspective or from the economics uh, perspective, it would be interesting for me to know what is the variance of incomes of the taxi drivers between the two biggest cities uh, in this country or between e two different countries. So from the sociology, I would be interested to know what is the proportion of adults in the US, for example, who believe in global warming or in industry, say, what is the average weight of a two kilogram pack of potato? So the last question sounds strange, but you should know that if you would like to make a pack of two kilogram of potatoes, they are going to be always different uh, in, in terms of the graphs. So, so I, I need to, I need to, so if I would like to try to answer to every of, uh, uh, to each of these questions, it's not going to be really easy because in order to answer to most of these questions, I need to go through lots of people, ask them or measure them, test them, which is not so really feasible and possible, right? So what I can do is I can estimate, for example, that proportion of U.S. adults who believe in global warming is going to be between 70% and 80%, for example, right? Where I can estimate, hey, the average blood pressure of women over 45 years old is going to be like 110, the systolic one, and 80 for the diastolic one, right? So I can just estimate this. So throughout this lecture, we're going to learn how we can, for example, estimate the population parameters. So for first of all, we need to define and introduce some of the notations. So we call the parameter or the population parameter the numerical values of the population property. For example, the mean, the standard deviation, or the proportion of the whole population is going to be called as a parameter. And the same properties, but for the samples, are going to be called the statistic. For example, I can calculate the average height of all the students in a country. And this is going to be the parameter because this is the numerical value of the whole population. And if I could calculate the average height of all the students in our university or even in our group, this is going to be the statistic because we are calculating the numerical value of just the sample, just a part of the population. And even from the notation wise, we are going to denote the parameters and statistics uh, differently. So, for example, the mean of a sample is denoted as x bar, while for the, uh, for the population, we're going to denote the mean as the mu. The variance for the statistic is denoted simply s in a square, and for the parameter is sigma in a square. Proportion for the statistic is going to be just a p, for the, uh, for the population is going to be p with the hat. So what we would like to do is, I would like to estimate the population parameter I would like to estimate what is the mean of the population or what is the variance of the population or what is the uh, proportion of the population. And one of the easiest and logical ways to estimate the population parameter would be to just take a sample, calculate the same numerical property of the sample and say, okay, so the population's parameter is going to be the sample's statistic. For example, if I would just go to one of the stores near Chorsu Bazaar, the big stores near, near, near the Chorsu Bazaar, and I can assume that there are lots of books in one store. Let's assume that you know, there are 2,000 books which are not really digitalized, and I would like to know what is the average price of the books in that store. Well, so I can go through all the books, write down the prices, and since the prices might be changing every day, so it's going to be not so easy for me to calculate the average price of all the bits. So what I can do is I can, um, I can create a sample, right? So I can choose some of the books from the different categories. Then I can calculate the mean of the small sample which I've chosen. For example, I can choose 30 books out of 2,000. 
I can calculate the average price of 30 books. And this is going to be the statistic, right? Because this is the numerical value which represents the property of the sample. And I can guess, okay, I can say I'm estimating that the average price of all the books in the store is going to be the average of the sample. So this is going to be estimation. And in this case, I'm making one point estimation, right? So I'm estimating the mu with just one point, with just x bar. And uh, for example, so I can choose 30 bits, 32 books from the local store. So the, here are the prices of those books in thousand sums, for example. Then I can just sum all of the 32 numbers and divide them to the 32. And this is going to be giving, uh, this is going to be 74.32. It means that average price of this, uh, of the sample is equal to 74.32. And I can assume, or I can estimate that the average price of all the books in this bookstore is equal to the 74.32, right? So, so I would like to bright, bring your attention again to our global questions, what we are doing actually. We would like to estimate the population parameter and we can't really go through every member of the population in order to calculate actually the, or exactly the population parameters. And what I, we are going to do is we are going to estimate the population parameter. And one of the ways to estimate the population parameter is to take the sample, calculate the statistic of the sample and say, okay, so I'm guessing that the population parameter is going to be like the sample statistic. And the problem with this way is that this is not really reliable because if I choose a different sample and calculate the mean, this might be a totally different number. For example, if I choose a different sample of the bigs, and calculate the average, the average might be not 74.22, it might be 84.33, or it might be 78.55, right? So every time when I choose the sample, the average of the sample is going to be a random number, and this might be different every time. So this is not really a good way to estimate the population parameter by just using one point estimate. And maybe the better way would be to create an interval around the one point estimation. So the idea is like, we are going to find the sample, calculate the statistic of the sample. And once we found this, we're going to create the interval around the st sample statistic in order to estimate the population parameter. And the natural question here is that how big this interval should be, right? So should I choose this interval really big or should I choose this interval really small? So while it depends again in our confidence, uh, so confident level. So if I would like to be more confident about my interval, then I need to choose bigger interval. If I would like to be less confident, then I need to choose less smaller interval. For example, if I would like to be confident for the 90%, I can choose the smaller interval. But if I would like to be more confident about, about my interval, then I need to choose 0.95. So here, I would like to explain you one more time, what do, what do I mean? So if I would like to be 90% confident that the population, so population mean, so the average price for all the books, all the 2,000 books in this big store is going to be in my, in this interval, um, is 90%. So this is my confident, confident level is 90%. Then I can choose the interval like this. But if I would like to be more confident, if I would like to be 95% confident that the population mean is going to be in this interval, then I need to obviously choose the interval bigger than before, right? So if I would like to be less confident, I can choose the interval smaller. If I would like to be more confident, then I need to choose the interval bigger and bigger. If I would like to be like 100% confident, I need to choose the interval between the smallest price of the big in the store and the highest price, the smallest number and the highest number in the, in the population, right? In the whole population. Good. Um, so we need to always try to find a balance. And the only question again is, what does it mean that I would like to be 90% or 95% confident mathematically? So since we are learning the subject, like in statistics or in the probability, uh, from the mathematics and applied maths perspective, it would be really good for us to define what do I mean by saying, hey, 
I'm ninety percent confident about this interval, or ninety five percent confident about this interval. So mathematically, it means that confidence level C is the probability that the population parameter lies in the confidence interval. So basically, we're going to build the interval around the sample statistic, and we are going to say, hey, so if I say so if I say that, hey, I'm ninety percent confident, it means that probability that actual mean of the population is in this interval is equal to the 0 0.9. Or we are going to do the same thing for the population proportion. So if I would like to know, hey, what is the proportion of the people in Uzbekistan, if you use the Instagram or the Twitter, for example, then again, I can create a sample, I can find the uh, proportion of the people who use the Instagram in the sample, then I can create the confidence interval, okay? And the confidence level of 95%, it means that, hey, the real proportion of all the people in Uzbekistan who use the Instagram is, uh, is going to be in this interval, and its probability is equal to the 0 0.95. So uh, in both of these cases, so, the, so again, the idea is we are going to create the confidence interval, not just one point estimate, right? And do you see that all the time we are going to, you are probably seeing these two numbers, right? E plus minus E. So the idea is to choose the point estimate, add the number and subtract the number in order to create the, the interval. And this number actually is called the error margin. And obviously it depends on the confidence level. And later on, we are going to talk about, in our next lectures actually, we're going to talk about how to calculate this error margin because algorithmically it should be for, it, it should be more or less clear for you how to create the confidence interval. The only thing is the technical question is how to calculate the error margin, for example. So let's make a summary. So we can estimate the population parameter using a point estimate when we just take a sample and calculate the sample statistic and estimate the population parameter by equalizing by just saying that, hey, the population parameter is going to be the sample statistic. Or we can create the interval around the sample statistics. This is called the interval estimation. So we are going to take a sample, find the sample statistic, and we are going to create the interval around the sample statistic by adding and subtracting the so-called error margin. And we say, hey, the probability, or we are 90% or 95% confident that the population mean is going to be in this interval. So in our next lectures, we're going to talk about uh, so how to make the interval estimation for the population mean, population proportion, and the population variances. For each of the cases, we're going to have the same, like separate lectures, and we're going to consider them more with more details.